That's right, fellow garage golfers. We got the Unicor IXO in, received it today. I'm about to unbox it. I'm about to show you how to install it. I'm looking forward to testing out for you. Coming right at you. All right, so before we get started with this whole process, if you're interested in having a setup similar to what you see behind me, don't forget to reach out to me anytime at Roland at MyGarageGolf.com. I'm always here to provide info for you, answer any questions you have. So if you've been interested or considered getting a golf simulator setup like what you see behind me, even if it's entry level or anything in between, I'm your man. I want to be the one to help you out throughout that process. I look forward to answering any of your golf simulator questions at home. All right, so the box says it all, as you see right here. Boom. Unicor IXO. It's been really touted. It's a really cool product. I'm going to unbox it for you now. See if I don't cut my finger off as I do this process. And let me show you what's in that box. And no, this isn't one of those fake unboxing. I literally just received this about an hour ago. So I'm excited to open it for you. Cardboard. We don't need that. Toss it aside. Here you see the actual, this is going to be the calibration device that you'll put down on the floor with the Unicore IXO. Very similar one comes with the QED. Now one thing to keep in mind at home as far as one difference between the Unicore IXO and the Unicore QED is the actual amount of space in which can be calibrated. So I've been told that the Unicore IXO is a 12 inch by 12 inch space. So when basically what that means is where you put it down as far as where your hitting area is, that's how far within that area that the system is going to be able to allow you to place a ball. With the Unicore QED, it was actually more like 18 by 22, I believe, which allowed me to kind of putt further away from my hitting mat. I'm not gonna be able to do that with the IXO, so we're gonna see how that works for me here in my setup. Bubble wrapping. Okay, and here you see the IXO unit itself, complete with bracket. See the bracket screwed in already to the unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that bracket from the unit, we're gonna mount it behind me that you'll see here in just a minute, and then we're gonna place the Unicore IXO on that bracket. So let's see what else is in the box. All right, now this is the LAN cable that comes with the IXO. One end plugs into the IXO unit, one end plugs into the Cat5 port on your PC. So if you were to consider getting a Unicore system, whether it be the QED or the IXO, please note, you're gonna to need to have an ethernet port. If you already have an ethernet port that's being used by your internet, we have this handy little adapter here. And what this does is one end plugs into the USB, the other end plugs into your internet. So this one here that comes with the IXO, this has to be plugged into your internet port on your PC. This adapter is for your actual internet line, so you can still have hardwired internet and have your Unicore IXO set up. That's why you have these two items here in the box. All right, the last box inside the box itself is going to be the power cord for the Unicore IXO. We also have the adapter here that you'll see here, power block, and We have the power wire. So this is what's gonna be what actually powers the Unicore IXO. This will plug into the unit itself, go into an adapter here that will then plug into the power block, I believe. So we'll show that to you here shortly. We also have screws, one bag, two bags, three bags of screws all together. And we have a little device here. It's a little USB device that comes with the unit itself. And this is gonna be what actually installs the hardware for the Unicore IXO system. So I've had this in my drawer here next to my computer for a while for the Unicore QED. So it has the same exact hard drive, thumbnail drive basically, that will work with the Unicore IXO. And this is what's gonna be what installs that program onto your computer once you have it set up and ready to go. Lastly, we have the actual club stickers essentially. So with this unit, for it to read your club, you're gonna put some stickers on it, one on each side, one on the toe and one on the heel. Nothing major, nothing too invasive but it does come with some stickers here. 
and uh, we'll be placing those on our clubs for testing purposes once we start using this unit as well. So that's pretty much it for the box. Now, our next step is going to be to go ahead and do the installation process of this. So I'm gonna show you how I install this unit, what I need to do for that entire process. Pretty quick and easy, you install one bracket, you basically attach the unit to that bracket, and then all you gotta do is have a place to plug it in, and you have to have it connected to your computer using that Cat5 cord, that, that basically that cord that it comes with the unit itself. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. I'm gonna show you a quick video as far as how my setup is, where I'm placing the unit itself, and then we'll get started with the installation. I'll walk you through that really quickly, and then we'll show you a little bit more on the software side of things from there. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of prep work I had to do. Obviously, you see the ladder here in the studio still. And to go ahead and mount the Unicorn IXL, I went ahead and placed a board up on the ceiling, 24 by 24. And you'll see the screws, I haven't painted over them yet. But that's where I placed it because that's where my rafters ran and I needed to have a secure way to mount the bracket to the ceiling. So you'll see it there, give you a good idea as far as where it will be mounted. And then of course here where you see the wire hanging through the ceiling, that's where I'm gonna run the wiring for the IXO up and through the attic, all the way across over here. There you see the QED where it's mounted. It's gonna go down into this wall here, all the way down through there and then out into my computer here. There's my computer set up here in the studio. So I just wanna give you a quick idea on how I'm gonna do that. But all together, this is where the IXO will be placed. And there you see the distance to my screen here. Now on their website, it does recommend about nine feet. I don't have nine feet of space. As you see back here, this is a bigger angle of the actual studio. There you see where it's gonna be mounted. I'm gonna have about four to five feet of space maximum from where it's gonna be mounted to where my actual impact screen is. So we'll get it tested out and see how that works, if it affects anything. Let you know if we see any issues with it not reading, any discrepancies, because obviously I'm limited to the space I have, and all together from here on this tire stop in, the, in my actual garage to where the screen is, it's probably about 15 feet. So there's no way I would have nine feet of ball flight in order to make this work. So we're gonna get it tested out, I'll be able to answer any questions that I have as I go through this process and explain it to you. We just wanted to kind of show you the setup and where we'll be mounting the actual IXO unit here for testing purposes. Okay, so one of the first things I did when I'm getting this set up is I want to determine where the center of my mat is. Again, we're very limited to 12 inches roughly where we need to have this set up. So what I did is I have a laser meter that you see here and it shoots right through the middle of my mat as you see there. Where I have the actual tape measure starting, that's where the center of my mat is. From that point to where the actual front of the Unicor IXO is, needs to be three and a half feet. That's 42 inches. So what I did was I got that measure and I placed down a piece of tape, as you see there. The back part of that tape is where we need to put the front part of the Unicor IXO. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a laser from that point right there, up here onto the ceiling, and that's gonna determine where we need to place that Unicor IXO. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, now just a tip, when you are going to install the IXO onto the bracket, go ahead and put the screws in that you see here. Mine came put together already with the bracket, so I just left the screws. But there you see the six screws that's going to attach to that bracket. The reason why you leave them out is now you're just going to slide the IXO into the spot that holds the screws and then you can tighten the screws from there. So we're gonna see how this all works out. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna finish putting the screws up onto the bracket and then we're gonna actually place the Unicor IXO onto the bracket itself. I got my lovely assistant, Olivia, here. We're gonna be working on getting this set up. And just so you guys at home know, she helped me build this entire simulator. Everything you see here, we put it up together. So I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of my wife. So I'm really appreciative to her for letting me do this. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, that's good for now. All right, so what we did for now is we just put up three screws to hold it into place. I'm gonna actually set the Unicor IXO on there just to make sure my alignment is properly set and we'll see how it looks from there. All right, so I'm gonna have her hold it as I, I check for the actual setup of it and see if I like where it's placed. All right, so we went ahead and did a manual check on where we placed the unit. We liked the way it looks, we liked the way it's set up. So now we're gonna go ahead and finish screwing in the rest of the nine screws that come to go ahead and mount this bracket onto the ceiling. All 
All right, so the bracket's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and place the unit back in there and secure it down now. Oh, come back. There you go. Slide over and down, all right? Yes. Okay. All right, and there you see the unit mounted fully onto the ceiling with the bracket. And I'll take you up there to actually show you how we mounted it. All right, so it's gonna be a little hard to see, but there you see the bracket all the way across with the three screws. And then on the back side, there you see the three screws and how they sit in there all together. So it does have little bubble wrap to protect the two cameras that are on the unit as well and a protective film that we'll take off here shortly. So our next step as we talked about is we're gonna actually run this Cat5 cord that you see here up. We're gonna tie it to this line. We're gonna run it through our attic, down the wall and into our PC. The other end is what plugs into the actual Unicore IXO system. So let's go ahead and take care of that now and we'll bring it right back to you. Okay, so one hour later, we finally got that done. And if you've ever been up in an attic in Texas in the summertime, you understand that it is not a fun process. But let me show you that what we did. We ran that power cord, and there you see the cord right there. And I will secure that down a bit, running through the ceiling into the attic, which we then ran all the way across here and down the wall here and out through right here. That goes out of the wall back here behind my curtain that I have. This is where my water heater and my water softener are. And then right down here to the back of my PC. So it's set up, it's ready to go. Now the last thing we gotta do to get this finished before we do the software is now we gotta set up the power cord. So the power cord is gonna go right up here. All right, and there you see the Cat5 cord that we just installed. Right next to it is where the power cord will go. You see I have an outlet already dedicated for it right there. So the only thing we have to worry about now is going to be the big power bank that comes with it. On my QED, which you see right here, there's a shelf back there that I built and that's where the power bank went. I don't have a shelf here this time, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to probably Velcro it to the ceiling or figure out a way to do that, which we'll do here shortly. So we'll do that step next. Okay, so I think we found a pretty creative way to go ahead and hide these wires. Uh, hopefully Unicore doesn't frown upon this, but if they do, I could always adjust it. So let me show you the setup here. Let me go ahead and get down on the ladder just a bit. Okay, so there you see the power cord there. And I tacked it to the ceiling here, and now you see it plugged in there. So there's the plug, and there's the Cat5 cord. If you wrap around to the back, there's a little gap there where I hid that big power bank on the top, and all the wires are kind of tucked in a little bit right there. So that's what I did for my setup. And again, if that's gonna end up being an issue, which I will talk to the Unicore people about, then I will go ahead and adjust it. And what I would probably do is use double-sided Velcro, heavy duty, and just have it actually Velcro to the ceiling. But it gives me a nice little spot to go ahead and hide um, any of the wires in the power bank that's there. So everything looks good. I think uh, we're ready to go ahead and call the people at Unicore in regards to setting up um, a, a time to go ahead and do the software and they'll, help, they'll go ahead and help me remotely do the software side of things. So the installation part here is done. I did also, I took the film off of the front of the unit. So there you see the camera one, and there's another camera over there, and there's a total unit. So again, there's the IXO, and there is the QED all set up. So the only thing I am concerned about is the distance from the IXO to my screen, which you see right here. And also when I hit a shot, if I hit a flop shot, normally we'll hit this actual baffle right here. And uh, if I open it completely, a 60 degree all the way open, which you would rarely do in simulator setup. Uh, but I'm worried about it hitting this baffle and ricocheting back and hitting this. So what I may do is I may hang a piece of board here with an L mount or L bracket or something to support a ricochet shot from the actual baffle and I probably put some padding on the back of that board just to support it. So I will see if that's gonna be needed or not for this setup. So there we go. The whole entire unit has been set up and we're now ready to go ahead and set up the software. 
let's go ahead and jump into that software next. Uh, if you have any questions on the actual installation part of this process, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks again. All right, so I've been doing some testing with this IXO, and if you see here, here you see a little bit of data on the screen, and well, as well as a video of me hitting the actual eight iron here. Decent strike on this one. I've had some poor strikes today, but also you see things like dynamic loft, launch angle, backspin, attack angle, face angle, side angle. Again, I have the stickers on here for all of these, club path and side spin. Um, you also have the option to see where you hit with the actual club. In this case, I hit at a lie angle down of seven degrees shows you vertical and horizontal impact and you can also take a photo and again you'll see here from this photo toe down it does match the illustration as far as what we see here on the screen so so far very impressed with some initial testing just finished doing the installation look forward to showing you more videos here coming soon now let's take a look at the ixo club and sticker placement and this is going to be Obviously the IXO does read your club face, but it does need to help with some stickers on it as well to help read that the right way. So they do give you, in the package you get about 30 strips of stickers and each strip has 20 total stickers on it and you're going to put one per club. So this talks to you a little bit more about how you're going to set that up. It shows you your club face, your grooves, bar sticker, and dot sticker and it shows, it's going to show you where to put it. But this is what the club data as far as what it's going to read. Club speed, smash factor, face to path, attack angle, club path, face angle, dynamic loft, club lie angle, and impact point. But in order for those to read accurately, we need to have these stickers on there. 
So here's an example of a driver. And here in this case, you'll see that these are the grooves. So you're gonna count the grooves on the driver and you basically wanna be centered with that driver. So in this case, it's the fourth groove down from the top. You'll see you put the bar sticker here and you see you put the actual dot sticker here, pretty much on the same line. You wanna make sure that they're horizontally aligned to each other. And here's an example of an iron with 13 grooves. So on an iron with 13 grooves, you wanna look for the seventh groove. You're gonna put the piece of tape, the bar sticker, here and you're going to put the dot sticker here towards the heel and again all it has to do is it has to be in the same place as far as the same height horizontally and it's easy on these clubs because you can count the grooves so that's where we're going to want to put it for each club and if you look down here here's some examples of where we don't want it to be put obviously we don't want it hanging off the bottom of the club and we also in this case the sticker must attach inside the club face for proper reading so this is an example of like maybe a three wood or something and as far as where you'd want to place it you want to make sure it fits inside the groove of the club and you're going to also want to make sure that the dot sticker matches the same height so this gives you an example all four corners of the stickers must be attached to the club face if the club is short and all four corners of the bar sticker cannot fit inside the club face down the horizontal line you can move up the horizontal line so that the bar sticker can be placed inside the club face so this is an example of what they're looking for on the right and on the left here is an example of what you don't want to do in regards to setting up these stickers. Lastly, here's an example of a club that doesn't have any grooves at all, which is going to be kind of rare, but in case you do have one of those situations, you want to look for the center of the club, you want to line them up so they're basically horizontally aligned for each other. So this just gives you an idea on how to set up the stickers. And again, all together, there's 30 strips of stickers, there's about 20 on each one. So you're gonna get a good amount of life. Now I did, I did communicate with the people at Unicor, and in this particular case, um, if you want or need a new strip of stickers or basically a new pack of 30 roughly, it's gonna cost you about $30. And uh, they will give you some information if you reach out to them at their phone number as far as how to order that. Now they are going to be updating their website here in the future where you can order these things online. But for now you can reach out to them at their phone number on their website to get more information on how to order these stickers. So I just thought I'd share that with you also. And just to show you at home, I did place some stickers on my actual clubs itself, as you see here. And here you see the bar sticker, and here you see the dot sticker here. Now on mine, I actually only had 12 grooves, so that just gives you an idea. And I have a little white line here, but it's not a groove. So I went ahead and placed it there on the line. And I will tell you, I have big hands and big fingers and this little dot sticker here is a little bit hard to put on, uh, for me anyways, and I have shaky hands too. So all the fun of trying to put those dots on, but I did get them on and it is something that I think you'll, you'll get better as time goes on as far as putting those on. But this is one thing I'm really kind of curious to see is how long these last, uh, how long I'm gonna have to keep repeatedly put them on. And I'm assuming each time I play a round of real golf, that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to continue to do as I go through that process. And here's an example of the driver. And again, in the driver situation, there's my bar strip, there's my dot. And again, at least I have a line to kind of guide me as to how I want to do it. But just wanted to show you and let you know kind of how I did it from my setup. I'm looking forward to continuing to test this out, but I did want to show you those stickers. It's not easy to do, but it's definitely something that I think you'll get better with as time goes on. All right, so we've had everything installed and we went through the software, but there's one thing I want to point out to you at home that I had an issue with on my setup. And it's definitely something I want to bring to your attention in case anyone at home looks to actually get a Unicore IXO and they're installing it themselves. And that's in relation to the bracket and the actual sensor itself. So when I was setting up my mat, as you see here, there's the center of my hitting mat and I went vertically straight up and there's my sensor there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up on the ladder here and I'm going to show you where I had the actual center of my bracket. Let me do that for you now. Okay. All right, so there's the center of the actual bracket where that, you see that middle screw right there. That's the center, but if you look down right underneath it, you see that that's actually lined up with the right part of the sensor on the IXO system. So the center of the IXO isn't actually centered in the middle of the device itself. It's actually a little bit offset to the left. So when I set up mine in relation to my hitting position down here, it's actually a little bit off center. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to go back uh, to adjust my unit here on the ceiling. So I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment to it 
I need to move it about two inches to the right, basically, at this point. And the reason for that is it's a little bit off-centered. So it's off-centered about two inches altogether, so I need to move it a little bit to the right. And part of that reason is that the actual sensors we talked about, it's really only about 12 inches by 12 inches now because we're reading some club data with the unit itself. So I'm going to need to adjust it a bit. And I'm going to move it tonight about two inches over to the right just so it's centered with the middle of my mat. But something for you to watch at home in case you're doing the install and you're looking to try to center it with where you want to hit, you want to do it to the center of the sensor, which is about two inches left, essentially, or basically two inches to the left of where that screw is. So where the center screw is, go about two inches to the left, and that's actually the center of the sensor for when you're trying to line it up with your hitting mat. Just a little bit of a tip at home, it's maybe save you a little bit of hassle and headache when you're doing your install as well. All right, so that's it. That's the entire installation and software setup, even went into the club stickers and everything that we need to do there. So I wanted just to show you this video. I hope it helps to answer some of your questions with this process. I've had a lot of questions on how do you set up the IXO and basically what the differences are between the IXO and the QED. So in future videos, look for more information on that. I'm also hoping to test the QED side by side with the IXO, but I have been told that the infrared between the two units can cause them to basically conflict with each other, giving us misreads. So I will do a test on that. We'll see if we can get that to work so we can see what we're looking at. I'm looking forward to testing out real golf balls versus say the Unicore balls that they give you, the Mark balls. And also just testing out also a little bit more in that club data with the stickers to see what kind of data we're getting with everything that's involved now. So I'm really excited about the process. I'm hoping to answer a lot of questions for people out there that may be considering the IXO versus the QED and uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to testing, answering your questions. So if you have any questions anytime, reach out to me, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. I answer a lot of questions on there and we have a lot of members now. We have over 3,000 members in our Facebook group now. So we're continuing to grow there also in addition to this channel. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. You don't have to smash that like button. You can gently <laughs> click it just a bit. It definitely helps out the channel. And of course, if you have any questions at all about setting up a golf simulator, similar to what you see behind me, whether it be Unicor or any other product out there, I'm the person, I'd like to be the person anyways, to answer your questions on those things. That also helps out our channel. At no additional cost to you, we can provide recommendations for products, nets, screens, mats, anything that you may be looking for. So if you haven't yet done so, please send me an email. Let me know how I can help you at home and I'm also free. I like to talk to people on the phone, answer their questions. I do this all in my free time, but I enjoy doing it. So it's part of the process and I look forward to helping you at home. So we're gonna continue to pump out new videos. We'll have some more info on the IXO and everything as far as all the features and everything that's gonna be coming out and things that you can look for. So I'll be happy to test that out. As always, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and until next time, keep on golfing.